Good morning from D23 Expo again. Today is Sunday, the very last day. We've got the Disney Parks and Experiences panel. We're kind of running. We're not late, but we're a little bit behind the schedule that we would like to keep. So we're running down to try to get into Hall D23, and we will be experiencing the Parks panel, seeing what all new stuff is coming to the parks and resorts and probably cruise lines and things like everything. It's the biggest panel of the expo. We're gonna be in there, having a look around, seeing what's coming, getting some exciting news. So let's head down. All right, we've made it downstairs and we're underneath the, actually underneath the Hall D23, which is right above us. And we are trying to find a spot. All of these people are waiting to get into the Parks and Experiences panel. So yesterday for the Marvel panel, we were over in A. We decided to try out section C this time. So we'll be to the right of the stage and we're back a little bit in hopes that we'll be able to see the screen a little bit more. I don't know, we're, you know, it's just like a, a shoot. So the best spot would be in section B right there. These are all the preferred seats up in front that paid, they were, their tickets were very, very expensive and sold out very quickly. I tried to get one, but it sold out. And then over there is just like us where we just had reservations. We could have gotten there if we had gotten here earlier and that would have been the best seats but I think we're pretty good right now. All right, it looks like we're starting to funnel in. We've got about half an hour before the panel starts and we are making our way into the hall. They handed us a towel or like a napkin that says Tiana's Bayou Adventure. And they said, keep them out because we're gonna need you to have them ready. Because I'm assuming we're gonna wave them around in celebration of Tiana's Bayou Adventure when we learn the opening date. Maybe, maybe they have an animated ride through. All right, let's see where we're gonna end up. Kind of, kind of feel like we've got a pretty darn good view of everything. Like the stage is over there, so we're not gonna be having the greatest view of what's happening on the stage. But being able to see the stuff on the screens, not bad. Happily ever after at Walt Disney Resort. Don't do it to me, Josh. If you're anything like me, you just flash back to standing up on Main Street watching the sky light up over Cinderella Castle. You know what? Let's get started with announcement. Right off the bat, <laughs> just for you, our biggest fans, I am so excited this year that next year, bring back the Happily Ever After. Oh, good God. Now, I know that change can be hard, and we may not get things perfect all the time. But I also know that you want to be part of what we're doing and where we're headed, and that means everything to us. And now, Epcot is only a short few weeks away. It's 40th anniversary, and there is so much happening at the park as it continues its transformation. Let's go over to Disneyland Paris, where I hope you got to see Mickey light up the Eiffel Tower in honor of the resort's yeah, 30th yeah, anniversary. Yeah. Such a cool moment for our cast and all our fans. We also have the new Disney D-Light drone show happening each evening over the castle. Really cool to see. And I am pleased to announce that the resort's 30th anniversary celebration will continue through September 30th of next year. So if you have not got a chance to visit, so cool. get over there and check it out while there is still time. And as part of the grand finale for this 30th celebration, I am also excited to announce that we will have a brand new show coming to the Walt Disney Studio Park. It's called Pixar, We Belong Together, and it'll debut next year in the Studio Theater. I'm gonna go fast, so bear with me here. Are you guys ready to come along on a little journey with me? Where are we? We are literally down the street yeah. from... from the Disneyland Resort. We got a lot of Disneylanders here, I know that. So let's start right there. I'm looking for someone who was told to meet at Oka's Cantina. All right, all right. Hey, it looks like you got a, a little friend there. All right, Is that you? let's go find this guy. Here in California, we introduced Iron Man, Black Widow, Thor, Black Panther, Captain America, Scarlet Witch, Loki, Shang-Chi, Loki, Mighty Thor, and of course, Loki. Of course, 
to expect. We've got Spider-Man swinging overhead. We've got the Gorham Lage showing us the way of the Wakandan warriors. Yeah. And we've got Doctor Strange teaching us about the mystic arts. And you know what? Like I said, we are just getting started here. But what does just getting started mean? Hey, hey, hey guys. <laughs> Quickly, I, I'm watching the live stream. And this is amazing. Um, but I, I just, I had one, one suggestion, just off to the side. You know, Avengers uh, Campus is incredible. And I'm just asking you, maybe suggesting that you expand the palette a little bit. You got red and blue. You got, you got, you got red and gold. You got black and silver. I'm just saying, you, you might need a little color. I want a little green. Just a suggestion. Uh, asking you to think about, about it. Whole, whole I, I, I'll let you know, Matt. You guys do an amazing job. Sending my love to everybody. Woo! I'm just going to step back and, and finish watching the live stream and hope there's some good news. But I think you should get your people on that. We can start working on that and get that in the works. I think that'd be pretty cool. You guys want to see a Hulk at some point? I'll be sure. Oh, how are you doing? That was fast. Isn't <laughs> this is Avengers Campus? Yeah. I'm supposed to meet Steve and Nat at Avengers HQ. I don't know what happened. What is this? One of those something cons? Something? This is D23 Expo, Hulk. Oh, the time-space GPS must be off. Now I'm annoyed. He can only stay for a little while right now. Please do not miss him, but he will be at Avengers Campus next Week. We're bringing the multiverse to the movies, as you know. We're bringing the multiverse to our series on Disney Plus, and now we're bringing the multiverse to Avengers Campus. That's right. And, and and as you heard, as Bob shared on Friday, we are expanding Avengers Campus here in California. And our creative teams have been they've been talking about a third attraction from the beginning here. But when when you filled us in on the multiverse, that sent us back to the drawing board for what this could mean to our land. And now, working with your team, Imagineers have come up with a concept that is entirely new. So, Kevin, we've got all of our biggest fans here in the room with us today. What can you tell us about the story and this new experience? Well, you know, the, the fun thing about Marvel is the characters, all the characters, all of the time. And with the multiverse at Avengers Campus, you're gonna be able to do that. And in this new attraction, you're gonna be able to battle alongside all the Avengers against all the foes from anywhere, from every win that you can possibly imagine. And you're gonna meet a new villain named King Thanos. This is a new version of Thanos for the very first time coming into the MCU via this attraction. And he's got a cool white beard too. And a crown. This is, this is a Thanos that won. Oh. And the Avengers are not too happy about that. And you have to help them. This is incredibly exciting. He is incredibly exciting and this is coming soon. I am excited to share that we're about to reimagine Pacific Wharf into San Francisco. Big. Yeah. This, everyone, is where East meets West. I love and I hope you love. It's Portos. For those of you that have, in fact, experienced Porto's, you know, you know this. This bakery is famous for its sweet pastries and its treats and its savory Cuban food and, and all the incredible desserts that they have. And trust me, it is all delicious. Don't run out and get it right now, okay? We've got a lot more to share before you get those pastries. And speaking of running, that reminds me, the last time that we had a Run Disney race through the Disneyland Resort, when was it? Does anybody remember what the last one was? 2017. Well, the races are coming back. So as you can tell, we've got a lot of excitement happening across the whole Disneyland Resort. And let's please not forget, it all started with a mouse. We are going to celebrate Mickey and Minnie and their best pals in a whole new way at Mickey's Toontown at Disneyland yeah. Park. The highlight, of course, will be Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway. Yeah. I'm guessing some of you have experienced before. It's already a huge hit at Disney's Hollywood Studios in Florida. 
And of course, we're going to make some very special adjustments to ensure that this version it fits perfectly into our two town story. And no matter when you met Mickey for the first time, there's going to be something in there for each of you, from Steamboat Willie to Mickey Mouse Club to his desk at Mickey's Christmas Carol, all the way up to the present day. It is going to be a celebration of all things Mickey. Now, this reimagining of Disney's Toontown, it's going to be fantastic. Now, I know from some of you out there that there was some concern that poor Donald is going to lose his favorite book. Rest assured, everyone, it's still there. Here's a first look at, at a new rendering that we have where you can see he's crashed it into Goofy's pond. And here, in this new rendering, you can see one of the silliest areas of new Goofy's How to Play yard. It's a fun, interactive sound garden where little ones will discover new ways to make all kinds of noises. These new experiences will join existing favorites in Mickey's Toontown when the land reopens in early 2023. Princess Tiana realizes her lifelong dream when she opens Tiana's palace. I mean, she's such an inspirational character, and in our brand new story, she's become this great entrepreneur and community leader. So, the year is 1927, and to celebrate carnival season, she's hosting a party for the people of New Orleans. But, she discovers her celebration is missing a very special ingredient. So, and she needs our help to go find it. So we're going to join Tiana and Lewis. We all love Lewis, right? Yeah. We're all going to take a magical trip to the bayou where we're going to meet brand new friends to invite to the party and they have a very special role. We want Tiana's Bayou Adventure to feel like you've stepped right into her story. Which is why I'm thrilled to announce that several of the film's cast will lend their voices to this attraction. Let's turn our attention to another place that I've had a chance to call home, Walt Disney World. Light them up, Josh. Now, when I served as president of the resort, I got a chance to work with the, the team that was planning the 50th celebration, and I am just so proud of all the new magic and new memories that they're creating for our guests. We've debuted two new nighttime spectaculars. We have Disney Enchantment at Magic Kingdom, yeah, and we have Harmonious at Epcot. Yeah. Well, both of them have been tremendous additions, and if you haven't seen them already, you definitely don't want to miss them. Miss them, because they're leaving. Because as I've been saying, we are always looking to the future. So I am excited to share that we're crafting an all-new nighttime spectacular for Epcot. And this show is in development right now, and it will debut later next year, continuing that park's legacy of inspiring nighttime entertainment on our World Showcase Lagoon. This, this is an exciting time for Epcot because we're getting close to another major milestone in its transformation. Our new neighborhood world celebration is taking shape in the middle of our park. The neighborhood will feature Communicore Hall, Unicorn Plaza, two great new locations for our festivals. And I'm also excited about Journey of Water inspired by Moana. Now, you are all the first to hear today that Journey of Water and the rest of the center of that park will be ready to welcome guests in late 2023. I've got just one more little surprise for you. Ooh. Well, I am thrilled to announce that by the end of next year, you'll get the chance to meet Figment in person once again out in the park. more to share in the future, but our teams are right now hard at work bringing Figment to life, and I know that you're going to all be excited to beat him. Ghosts will materialize in the Haunted Mansion at Walt Disney World. And we were talking about this attraction for a while now, but I'm telling you, it's really close to being ready for showtime. So close, in fact, I got a chance to take an early test ride, and I figured I'd give you a sneak peek. Take a look. I enjoyed that and what you all saw there that is just 
a little taste. That is why I am thrilled to announce to you today that Tron Light Cycle Run will debut in the spring of 2023. Here we go. We're going to leave dry oh. land for our sixth ship. We're dreaming up a brand new design concept that feels unlike anything Disney Cruise Line has ever done before. The, th the theme of the ship is adventure. Ooh. Celebrating, you knew it. Yeah. <laughs> Celebrating Walt's lifelong love for exploration. This is going to be an epic journey into Disney stories. And today, you're the first to see what the inside of this amazing new ship will look like. It's looking good, huh? That grand hall is inspired by the grandeur and mystery of a gilded palace. It draws on real-world influences from Asia and from Africa, as well as the far-off land of the Agrabah. As you see there, for the first time aboard one of our ships, the signature grand hall statue will feature three of our favorite characters, Jasmine, Aladdin, and their lovable magic carpet soaring together towards a whole new world of adventure. Do you all want to know the name of the ship? We will offer our first sailings in this part of the world beginning in late October of next year. The ship here is the destination on these voyages, inviting guests from this region into stories from Disney, Pixar, Marvel, and Star Wars. Now, obviously then, I'm also excited to share that the Disney Wonders repositioning cruises will be our first South Pacific voyages, oh. giving you the chance to experience destinations like Fiji, oh, and Samoa, <laughs> pretty cool. And there is more. Our Disney Cruise Line has started work on our new island destination. Yeah. Yeah. And I wanted you all to be the first to see it. Welcome it. to Lighthouse Point on the beautiful island of Eleuthera. We're still in the early stages, but I can tell this is going to be a spectacular location for our Disney Cruise Line guests. We have a long way to go, but just imagine the possibilities. going to keep going. That was the first time that I was on the island and I can tell you now from a personal uh, point of view that Lighthouse Point is going to be absolutely stunning. It's inspired by the stories of the Bahamas and we are committed to preserving and protecting the natural environment throughout this project. 90% of the power used at Lighthouse Point will come from solar energy. We want this to be an authentic experience filled with all kinds of Disney magic. This is a, it's a great overview of what your day on Lighthouse Point will feel like. In addition, obviously, obviously to that gorgeous beach that you just saw a moment ago, you'll have a recreation center, you're going to have food and merchandise locations, a youth activity area, and so much more. Here, your guests will be able to immerse themselves much more deeply into the Bahamian culture. Uh, we're excited to create a place where you can learn about the stories and the traditions that are passed down by generations of Eleuthera's residents. We just released this video clip just a few hours ago, and I wanted you to have the first look at it. And while we are talking about lovable characters, Mickey's favorite teddy bear, Duffy. We got some Ducky fans in here. He's, he has been a huge fan and favorite in our Asia parks for years. But listen, things went to a whole new level in Shanghai when we introduced his newest friend, Lena Bell. All right, a few Lena Bell fans in here. Well, just this week, that inquisitive fox made her debut at Hong Kong Disneyland and Tokyo Disney Sea, and the response has been ridiculous. Everybody making her first appearance ever in the United States. Please welcome the one and only Lita Bell. Oh, you are cute, Lita Bell. And as you can see, she's always looking for another mystery to solve. And while she continues to uh, live in our parks in Asia, I am so excited to announce that Duffy and friends, they're gonna star in their own show on Disney Plus, the six episode stop motion animated series debuting next year. Next year, Hong Kong Disneyland will unveil a brand new statue of Walt and Mickey. This is a tribute to that famous moment when 
Walt lost his children on the merry-go-round, that one little spark that eventually led him to create the thing we all love, Disneyland. Now, Hong Kong Disneyland is, is home to one of three new Frozen-themed lands that we're developing around the world. You can see the land in Hong Kong in this new rendering that we're debuting for you today. Uh, world of Frozen in Hong Kong is going to feature two attractions, including our first Frozen-themed coaster, Wandering Oaken's Sliding Slaves. <laughs> this land is, is really starting to take shape, as you can see here in this brand new footage that we're sharing for the first time. The way Arendelle blends in with the park's natural surroundings on Lantau Island, I think is just magnificent. And I'm happy to share that World of Frozen will open at Hong Kong Disneyland in the second half of 2023. In Paris, our Frozen theme land is a huge uh, expansion at Walt Disney Studios Park. You're going to be immersed in the same magical wintry setting from the films, including the Norway-inspired village and snow-capped mountains. And to connect Arendelle to the rest of the Walt Disney Studios, we're creating an entirely new promenade in the center of this park. As you make your way back towards Arendelle, you'll pass many beautiful new gardens, and I'm happy to officially announce today that one of these gardens will feature a new Tangle-themed attraction that we're developing for the whole family to enjoy, even the little ones. Now, Frozen is also one of the stories playing a role in the royal transformation of the iconic five-star Disneyland Hotel in Paris. Every guest room and all the communal areas, they're being rethemed, and they'll take inspiration from classics like Cinderella and Sleeping Beauty, Tangled, and even more. And the reimagining is fully complete in 2024. This will include three distinct stories, Peter Pan, La Tangled, and Frozen, plus a gorgeous, gorgeous hotel integrated right into the park. The Frozen attraction will feature several new audio animatronic figures. Space Mountain Tokyo Disneyland will undergo a transformation that will bring a new story and experience to this iconic attraction. Here is a first look at how the area will transition from day to night. Beautiful, I think. With a nod to the original architecture, this reimagined Space Mountain will anchor a new plaza that will be complete by 2027. I think it's just beautiful. Which of course is why I love, love visiting with our Imagineers. The ones who bring all of these ideas to life. Dreaming up new possibilities only Disney would dare to try is what these folks are doing every single day. And again, in this really cool job that I have, I regularly get to watch over their shoulders as they do it. Now look, what I'm about to share with you is probably going to make a bunch of Disney folks out there nervous. But I think it's going to make you all really excited. Um. <laughs> because what we're going to talk about next is way early in the creative process. It's what our Imagineers call blue sky. I want to be clear with everybody in here though. We are not up here daydreaming. It's important to me that you know these things we're going to talk about, they are very real. They are very serious discussions that I'm having with our teams about the future of our parks and experiences. Now, some of you might know, at one point in my career, I was lucky enough to be leading Disney's Animal Kingdom at Walt Disney World. And during that time, I was involved with some of the planning for Pandora, the world of Avatar. And it was so transformative for Animal Kingdom and our guests love that land. I was kind of always thinking about the possibilities for transformation in this other area of the park. And that's Dino Land. Since its beginning, Animal Kingdom has really focused on stories that have this, I, this connection to animals and intrinsic values of nature, and most of all, probably the power of transformative adventures. I remember the first time I sat down and watched Zootopia, the animals in those environments just jumped off the screen to me as a possibility that could live in Animal Kingdom. Oh. Yeah, I mean, how cool would it be to take our guests into the various districts? I mean, be immersed in Tundra Town, Little Redentia, Bunny Burrow, the Rainforest District, perhaps even points you haven't seen yet? But in all honesty, look, we love Zootopia, but we, we can't help as Imagineers but ask ourselves, where else could we go? Uh, something else that came to mind was Moana, maybe? I love the idea of Moana being in the Animal Kingdom. I mean, her story is one of adventuring beyond the reef, connecting with nature. I mean, in order to heal a broken world and save her people, I can just imagine getting to journey with her 
trying to fight off the Kakamura, meeting mysterious animals and creatures of the deep, it would be thrilling. These are the types of stories and narratives that really, I think, speak right to the heart of the park. I, I think all of that sounds great, and we have real, real aspirations for this part of the park, and we're all so excited about the possibilities here. Now, Chris, I seem to recall at one of those days at Imagineering, um, you showed me a piece of concept art for what we're talking about. We're gonna show you this. It's, it's big, it's beautiful, it's over the top. And I hesitate even to call this a concept, but we develop lots of paintings like this that help our teams envision the possibilities of what could be. This is just one of them. Magic King holds a special place in my heart. Um, I think there are so many amazing stories yet to be told, uh, lands yet to be explored, and one of the con concepts we're most excited about is this, this idea of new frontiers. Um, let, me give you, let me give you an example. So Josh, do you ever wonder if you could travel to the other side of Big Thunder Mountain, what could be there? Imagine. What if we could pass over those spires of Big Thunder Mountain? And maybe, maybe, maybe in front of us, there's a valley, there's a valley in front of us with, with the little town of Santa Cecilia. What if we could climb aboard the back of Albrea uh, and fly into the land of the dead with our familia, just like the Riveras in Coco? That's what could be uh, out there. It, I sure you know that there are many of us at Disney Animation, we cannot wait to see more Encanto in the parks. Uh, what if you could walk into the Madrigal's Casita, just saying, meet the family. What if Maribel is your guide, introducing you to all the wonder within those walls? Bruno's tower, Antonio's room, all of it. All of it. What if you could step up to a door and discover your own magical gift? Oh. What if? Let's talk about one more. I thought we talked. We no, 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 no. All right. One more. Right. Chris, come on. <laughs> All right. Do it. Yes, let's do it. Let's All right. Well, listen, I, I know this one is not planned anytime soon, but it's, it's something that we know all of you talk about. And it's a fun idea that's always in the back of our minds. In an, it's an area overrun by villains. I'm going to guess this doesn't just cross our mind, but 7,000 other people as well would love maybe to see this idea happen. <laughs> I can't wait to keep talking more with you both uh, about these ideas and to start locking some of this in. Beginning in January, oh my gosh, do we have a 100th anniversary celebration in store for all of you. As you know, we're calling it Disney 100 Years of Wonder. And as Bob said, it's going to be the biggest celebration in our company's history. Each of our destinations around the world, on land and at sea, will showcase the anniversary in their own way. We'll have plenty of new entertainment, we'll have new merchandise, we'll have special new food, we'll have drinks, and so much more. There will be more to share on all of this very soon. But I can tell you that the heart of this entire celebration will be right here in California. Beginning in late January, the happiest place on earth will receive new platinum-infused decor and new looks for Mickey and Minnie and her pals. We'll have special live entertainment moments that will pop up across the resort, including the long-awaited return of the Magic Happens Parade. Starting in late January, Disneyland Resort will showcase not one, but two new nighttime spectaculars. At Disney California Adventure, World of Color One will celebrate the storytelling legacy all started by Walt. It is going to be a world of color like nothing that you've seen before. And then, the new nighttime spectacular debuting at Disneyland Park, Wondrous Journeys, will ignite the wonder in all of us. It'll feature nods to all 60 Walt Disney Animation Studios films. This show will feature an absolutely incredible new song. It's the magic whole group of princesses over here that are pirate versions of the princesses. It's kind of awesome. Hello! Love it.
This is great. Such a fun idea. Kind of looks like he is almost done with the mural. Looks like he's got a little bit left to do, like maybe some of the highlighting over here. He's still got his ladder set up. So I think we got just a little tiny bit left to do. More cosplay photos happening. I feel like I can just kind of go into this crowd. And see everybody. Oh, this is Pot. Those are all the princesses now. So I was just going back through my Instagram story, trying to relive the parks panel and try to figure out like what we had that was an announcement. For Florida and we didn't get a lot we didn't get very much at all we got figment is coming as a character to Epcot and that's a uh, kind of it right <laughs> we got the name of the of the new ship the Disney treasure which is very exciting we got some possibilities of things these are blue sky ideas where they're like I don't know, these are things that we're tossing around. These nothing confirmed, nothing solid yet, but they're like, we could, in Animal Kingdom in Dinoland, we could put Zootopia, we could put Moana, and then behind Magic Kingdom, they talked about Encanto and Coco, and the Encanto one sounded kind of awesome. Oh no, the Coco one sounded kind of awesome because you sounded like like maybe a Soren type attraction or a roller coaster type attraction, and this would go back behind Big Thunder Mountain. So they are actively like planning to expand behind Big Thunder Mountain, but they weren't giving full details as to what that would be. And then we still don't have an opening date for Tiana's. Like, we know that it's going to be the end of 2024 for Tiana's. Uh, and then spring of 2023 for Tron. But no solid dates. Which is kind of disappointing. But, like, I can't... I'm going to look through my through my Instagram story again and see, like, that there wasn't anything else that they announced for Florida. Kind of a lot of stuff for California. Uh, oh, Happily Ever After coming back, of course. That's very exciting. We're getting new nighttime spectaculars on both parks in Florida, so Epcot's Harmonious is being replaced too, but Enchantment is being replaced with Happily Ever After soon. That's what it was. The last bit of big information coming out of Orlando is Hatbox Ghost. They're going to install Hatbox Ghost into the Haunted Mansion in Orlando. So we already have it out here at the Haunted Mansion in California, and we're going to have one in Orlando. Very excited about that. I can't wait to see it. I can't wait to see how the effect looks because it'll be newer than the one out here in California. So like the projections will probably be better, be more high quality. Maybe they'll have a better way of doing the effect. You never know. Uh, and then they talked like some like blue sky ideas. I think we talked about this a little bit, but they talked about Zootopia possibly going in Animal Kingdom. And there was a guy like a couple rows behind us that literally stood up out of his seat and started yelling boo as loud as he could. Like boo, boo about Zootopia coming to Animal Kingdom. So, I don't know, I feel like that might make people angry just based on that guy's reaction, but who knows? So I don't know, a lot of stuff, a lot of ideas coming out of this panel still felt like they didn't get a lot of stuff. Like we didn't get any announcements that we thought we were gonna get. Who knows, I don't know, maybe, maybe more stuff will be coming out in the next few months. So let's go have a look around the rest of the expo. And there's two power lines here, two of them. I know, maybe they will one day. But during the parks panel, we did get to hear a little bit more. We get to see the results of Project XO, where they brought out a Hulk walk around character. All right, so I think we're gonna call it a day from the D23 Expo, and that'll be the end of our Expo time here. Uh, kind of light on the announcements for the parks panel, but still exciting things coming. Hatbox Ghost is very exciting, and Figment is also exciting. The new cruise stuff is the most exciting for me. One more thing that I forgot to mention that they talked about is they're gonna be doing repositioning cruises because they have to take the, uh, I think it was the Wonder from Florida over to Australia and New Zealand. So they have to go over to like places like Fiji and things like that. Sounds really nice, but also sounds like it's gonna be uh, quite the rough travel. Like you're gonna hit some high seas for sure. So, I don't know. I think now we're, uh, we're gonna go over to D Disneyland, do some rides hang out because that's what you do after d23 so let's go we've made it to disneyland and it's the halloween season let's go inside i wonder if we can see some of the characters oh man i've missed a railroad or a train coming through the park 
Oh, feels good. One day that'll be back at Magic Kingdom in Orlando. Fun fact, this is also called the Magic Kingdom here at Disneyland. The other day at D23, we were able to see Walt make notes about this exact plaque right here. He changed some of the wording on it. Ah, uh, yeah, look at how small that little castle is at the end of the street there. Also, looking at some of the pumpkins along Main Street here, look at this little white pumpkin right here is adorable. The marching man is headed down to do the flag retreat. into Tomorrowland to start off with, I'm gonna ride Buzz Lightyear's Astro Blasters just for fun, because I haven't ridden it in a while. It's a pretty darn busy day because it's a Sunday afternoon. So Astro Blasters right now is a 25 minute wait. But we have a, we've got Lightning Lane, so we're gonna walk right in right now. Everything else for Lightning Lane is kind of a long time. Like I thought about getting uh, Space Mountain, but the return time is not until like seven o'clock tonight. Very reminiscent of Astro Blasters. There's Buzz Lightyear. I like this a lot better because you can actually take the little blasters out and point them wherever you need to rather than having them attached to the ride vehicle. I do still have to spin it on my own, but at least I have more freedom with where to point the, uh, the blaster at. Oh, but you can't hold the trigger. You still have to pull it every time. A little bit easier. I'm not seeing any laser. There it is. Okay. Very faint laser. This is hard to do because I feel like the... Hands, I think. So it was level four, 132,000. I'm a space scout. Nice work, everybody. Oh, look at this guy. Nice work, everybody. So we just got out of uh, Buzz Lightyear Astro Blasters. Like I said, very similar to Buzz Lightyear Space Ranger Spin, just a little bit different. You could pull the guns out, you still had to spin it, and then there was a little bit harder to aim because it felt like you're kind of holding the gun kind of like this, you know what I mean? Like it felt like you were pointing down, but the laser was coming out this way. Right now, we're gonna go into Frontierland, see if we can see Mirabelle, because I looked at the app and it said that she was out in Frontierland right now, so we're gonna go find out. One thing I liked about Disneyland is the, how small it is. Like we were just in Tomorrowland, you can see Tomorrowland from here and now we're in Frontierland. Like, it's not a very long distance at all. So a cast member came out and said, Mirabelle will be there at 5.15, it's 4.55 now, so I got about 20 minutes. I'm gonna run over to maybe Casey Jr., ride Casey Jr., and then come back, because Casey Jr. is only a five minute wait. Just passing by Big Thunder. There's a Mickey hat down there that somebody lost on Big Thunder Mountain. Oh, there's Casey Jr. We're gonna be riding it. They put me in the cage. A very tight quarters in here. My head is right here on the ceiling. At least we get to see how everything works. And it's shady in here, so it's nice and cool. This is where we're gonna spend the next few minutes on Casey Jr. Coming round the hill, every Jack and Jill, Casey Jr. Jr.'s bike. I thought he was gonna be a chain for us. Oh, All right, attempting to head back to Frontierland to see Mirabelle. They told me there that she was coming out at 5.15, but when I looked on the app, she's not there anymore in the app. So hopefully she's still there. We'll find out. And back into the line to see if we can meet up with Mirabelle, just outside of Rancho del Zeclo. All right, so there were too many people in line for Mirabelle. They actually closed down the line before she even came out. So it wasn't a good idea for me to leave the line and go ride Casey Jr., but we're gonna go up to Town Square and see if we can see maybe Mickey and Minnie. All right, we have to ride to get to the front of the park. 
It does. It's high quality animatronics. Oh man. Some of these people animatronics even look real. Found Mickey and Minnie over here. See if we can get up there and get a photo with them. There's Queen of Hearts. Oh, she's checking her hair. Looking fantastic. Looking amazing. Goofy is dressed like a pumpkin tree for Halloween. I think he's an apple tree. Ah. Oh no, he's been he's being attacked. He has, he has eggs on top of his head. Looking good. He's getting he's getting mobbed. See you later, Goofy. Well, how does he fit through this doorway? A little side shuffle. There's Mickey and Minnie. And we're gonna get in line. I have to tell you guys, I absolutely love your Halloween costumes. They are fantastic. And I I, I don't know, I'm flabbergasted with how good they are. Who came up with them? Mini. It was all mini? That figures, right? Well, is it okay if we take a photo together? Excellent, thank you. There they are, Mickey and Minnie in their Halloween outfits. Bye, Mickey! Bye, Mickey and Minnie! Definitely feels like a busy, crowded day here at Disneyland, but we're gonna head over to Pirates, because it's only a 35 minute wait. Now, there's no lightning lane for pirates, so 35 minutes should move pretty quick. All right, here we go, heading into Pirates of the Caribbean. I always have the worst luck with lines because there's two lines and I got in the wrong one, I think. That one's just constantly moving, and ours is not. All right, we've made it inside. We're gonna get on. I like that we're like right next to the water right here. This is the Pirates of the Caribbean water. There's the boats. We're walking right next to it. We got on the ride. Oh no, there's a lot of water in here. Oh no. A while ago, we ate at Blue Bayou over here. Hey, I'm, maybe we'll try to get a reservation for their, this trip. It's kind of a fun idea. You're eating inside of Pirates of the Caribbean. Do you think the people that are in these little huts out here are mad that there's a restaurant right outside their door? This guy doesn't seem to care. He's just sleeping. All right, here's the big drop compared to ours. You guys hear it? Come and seek an adventure in solitude. Sure, you'll come to the proper place. But keep a weather eye open, mates. Okay, bye. Yai wa. Yai wa. Oh, wait. There was a long rumor that there was real human skull in here in the headboard of this bed, and I think we found out that that wasn't true. No fear at I'm so glad I get to see my favorite band on the West Coast. I like that he has a chef's hat. There's a rainbow out here. So we're actually gonna end the video right here. I'm actually in this moment in time heading to meet up with Jen and Jackson for dinner. And then I go back into the park a little bit later, but that stuff sort of fit better in with the video that Jen was filming earlier in the day at Disneyland. So look forward to the continuation of this day with Jen and Jackson after their Disneyland video, which should be coming out very soon. Uh, but D23, it was fantastic. It was a really fun event. I'm glad that I went. 
Uh, Parks panel was amazing like getting in to be in the room for Parks panel even though we didn't get a lot of information or a lot of announcements out of it it was still very exciting to be in there all the new stuff that is coming is it, it's just exciting to be there when they announce it so all the information that you've seen in this video or that you've seen in other videos was already announced live via live stream by Disney but just being there was super amazing like super exciting and like the feeling in the room and people screaming and yelling. It was just a lot of fun. So I hope you guys enjoyed this trip to D23 with me. Now you get to look forward to more Disneyland videos and even a Halloween Horror Nights video. So all in all, a fantastic day. Look for more videos. And with that being said, we are off. We'll see y'all tomorrow. And now it's time to pay the price.